okay, let's play something else. No, again, again. I don't want to play anymore. I just lose every time. But I want to win again. If we're not going to play something else, I'll go find something else to do. Okay, fine. We'll play something else. Thanks. It's just not fun losing over and over again, you know. Sorry. I got carried away. It's kind of because of my track and field competition. Oh yeah, I forgot to ask you how it went. I got fourth place in the 100 meter sprint. I've been so disappointed about it. I trained so hard and I was so sure that I would get first place. I wanna be first. first things first, I don't wanna be second. Someone's got to lose, but I, I reckon first. first in line is the place for me. The gold, the praises, and the glory. I wanna be first. first means winning, first means pride. You pose for the picture and you smile so I wide. First. first in a race means you're really fast. Whatever it is, I don't wanna be I last. Wanna be first. It's fun being first, right? It makes us proud of ourselves. But do you think it's important to be first all the time? It sure is bothering Celine that she didn't win her race. Well, more on that soon. First, let's have some fun with art. Welcome to Art with Grace. Remember, you can draw with a pencil, paper, or even on a tablet. It doesn't matter how you draw. It matters more that you have fun. Let's start with drawing you. Your drawing should look like you, so go ahead and add those things that make you, you. Now, we draw how we like winning. It's just something we like, right? So if we draw all those things we've won, does it make you feel satisfied or happy all the time? Hmm? No? So, how do we have joy all the time? Let's draw all the gifts God gave us. It could be painting, sewing, singing, or even just being a good friend. When we use these gifts to glorify God, that is how we truly win and take first place in life. Wasn't that fun? Now let's see how Celine is coping with not winning her race. Oh no! I thought you were wingo for sure. Is it because of your ankle injury last year? I think so. I thought I was fully recovered. It's not painful anymore. But maybe it slowed me down for good. What if I never win again? I'm sure you will. But what if I don't? Before my injury, I used to win all the time. Getting another gold medal was like the best thing ever. And now I might never win another gold medal again. Hey, being first isn't everything. That's what mom said. That's what Jesus said too. Really? Yeah. Well, he kind of said, some are last who will be first, and some are first who will be last. Hello, everyone. How are you? How is everyone? Good? I'm glad to see you and that we are here again. And I want to share with you today's gospel, this Sunday's gospel. You know, when I was young, I heard people talking about heaven. They say heaven is a beautiful place, very safe, very peaceful. Why? Because people are so close to God who loves all people. When I was young, I always wondered, how many people will be in heaven? Well, heaven has no limit to the number of people who can enter. No COVID restrictions like, oh, only the vaccinated can enter. No such thing as only 50 people or 500 people. Why no such thing? Because God loves all. God loves everyone. There's not a single person whom God does not love. And God's house is open to everyone because God's house has many rooms. Remember, Jesus once said, There are many rooms in my Father's house. 
Sometimes they use the word mansion. Mansion means very spacious, a lot of space for everybody. All are welcome. And why is heaven so welcoming? Because God wishes all, everyone, to enter the kingdom of heaven. But then God also doesn't want to force us to enter his kingdom. Why does God not want to force us? Because he wants to give us the freedom to choose him or not to choose him to choose from our hearts to go to heaven or not. If we don't choose God or God's way, which is the way to heaven, then we choose evil. We may choose hell, where there's no love, there's no peace, there's no forgiveness, there's no care for one another. And there are many people also who choose evil, who choose hell every day. And they bring a lot of suffering, not only to others, but also to themselves. Often, they follow the worldly behavior. They follow the crowd going through the big door of wrongdoings. When they choose to be selfish, bully others, don't care for others, refuse to love people, refuse to forgive. There are people who choose to watch bad videos, bad pictures. They choose violence. You see this on the road. They choose to be aggressive. And there are people who do not respect life. They kill babies. So today's gospel reminds us to enter by the narrow door. And what does it mean to enter the narrow door? You know, once there was a couple called Annie and Tony. Tony's father, Grandpa Sam, didn't like Tony to marry Annie. But they got married anyway. And so for many years, when Annie was staying with Tony, and her father-in-law, Grandpa Sam. She was always bullied by Grandpa Sam, who was so aggressive, abusive, and very uncaring. Annie cried and cried so often, felt so lonely and miserable. Sometimes she wanted to run away from home, but each time when she wanted to do that, she thought of her two little children. How can she leave their ch her children so young? So Annie, just learn to be patient and not allow the silly and abusive behavior of her father-in-law, Grandpa Sam, to destroy her and her family. She chose to enter by the narrow door, the not-so-easy way of living her life, a way of loving sacrifice. Many years later, when Grandpa Sam was very old and sick, Annie still cared for him because she still wanted to forgive her father-in-law and she wanted to follow Jesus' way of loving, forgiving, and caring. Annie wants to follow Jesus in building a house where people can forgive, love, and feel safe. A place like heaven. This reminds me of a song I like very much to sing at Mass, which goes like this. Let us build a house where love can dwell and all can safely live. A place where saints and children tell how hearts learn to forgive. 
build a hope and dream and vision, rock of faith and vault of grace. Here the love of Christ shall end division. All are welcome, all are welcome, all are welcome in this place. Let us be welcoming, all are welcome. Let us be welcoming just like God who welcomes all to Him. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. So, it doesn't matter if you come in first or last. It doesn't matter how many medals you win. Sure, they may make you happy now, but that happiness won't last forever. So, what's the point of even racing then, if I don't win? Isn't the whole point to win? Well, I don't think so. When you first started running, you didn't win straight away, right? No, it took me a few years and a lot of training before I won my first goal. So why did you do it back then if you weren't winning? Because... Because I loved it. It made me feel so free and made me feel as if I had a purpose. That's how I feel about drawing. That feeling shows that it's a gift from God. He gives us passions like running or drawing. Oh, is that why sometimes I see you drawing pictures of Jesus and Mother Mary? Yeah, it's my way of showing how I'm thankful for that gift. Do you think I could do it for my running too? Of course, you could always offer a short prayer and offer up your race to God before you start. And enjoy the passion He's given me rather than being so obsessed with winning. Speaking of you winning, chopsticks. All right, let's go. I put Jesus first. First things first, all glory to God. Now I know that it may I sound odd, Jesus but first, first can be last, last can be first. Not winning everything isn't the worst. First, first means nothing without His love. We're all equal to our Father above. First, first can be last, strange but true. So put God first in all that you do. That's right. Don't worry about winning or being first. Just do your best in all that you do. Be thankful for your gifts and glorify God with them. Thanks for coming on this adventure with me. See you next week. Love of God.